we have a presentation on changes to the transfer process into the State Archives Collection. Uh, Emma Harris, would you like to join me up here? Um, Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> so, um, I've worked at State Archives for many years, so I've met many of you in other contexts, and I'm now in the agency services team. So. Um, we're responsible for helping agencies to transfer their records into the State Archives collection and we also assist with making access directions under the Act. So last month we updated the advice on our website about um, how to transfer records into our custody, so that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So um, at the end of last year, we did a um, satisfaction survey of public officers to find out um, how you saw our transfer services working. And um, we had 39 respondents um, provide feedback and overall, um, three quarters of people were either um, either rated the service as excellent or as good. So there was a um, reasonably high level of satisfaction with the existing service. Um, however, there were also quite a few comments about how we could make things easier for you. Um, and these are just some of the negative comments that we received. So um, the transfer process was described as complicated, time consuming, um, it involved too many forms, there were pedantic requirements about how the, those forms should be completed. And I guess the overall message was that the process should be simpler. So since that time, we've looked at the advice and um, tried to make it simpler. And um, as I said, last month, we published that new advice on our website. So what did we do? Um, we previously had a procedure which outlined our requirements and we've transformed that into step-by-step -step advice. So it outlines the six key steps that are part of any transfer process. Um, we took on board the feedback about the forms, so now there are two forms instead of four, as there were in the past. Um, and we now have some uh, fact sheets that include pictures. So um, some, uh, some of the feedback to the survey commented that it's really useful to get sort of um, hands-on advice about how to prepare records and um, when it comes to the condition of the records, the types of damage that need to be repaired before um, they can be transferred to our custody. So we now have a fact sheet on damage um, and it includes um, a little bit of information about the various types of damage that records um, can be subjected to and the types of damage that are okay and the types that are not okay and what you might need to do before we will accept them into our um, custody. So for example, um, that's one of the pictures in one of our new fact sheets um, with relation to sticky tape. So um, the fact sheet goes into a little bit of detail about um, the circumstances in which records can have sticky tape on them and where we really um, require you to take it off before transfer to us. Um, I would stress though that when it comes to condition of records it is still very much um, a bit of a case-by-case -case scenario so if you are concerned about the condition of records I'd encourage you to contact us and we can talk through what the options are. Um, we don't have um, black and white hard and fast rules um, so there's always room for negotiation. Um, and we also have a fact sheet on how to actually um, pack and list the records for transfer because that's something that we also received feedback on about um, exactly how to pack a box and um, what a well-packed box looks like. So that's what a well-packed box <laughs> looks like. Um, and, you know, where do we position barcodes and where do we write, um, you know, the series uh, numbers and things like that. So um, we have these new fact sheets which set out all that information and, um, where relevant, there are some pictures to guide you. So as I said, um, we transformed the advice into that step-by-step -step, um, approach and we've divided it into six steps. So I'm just going to quickly run through those. So the first step is that we want you to confirm that you have records that are eligible for transfer. So we only accept records that are required as state archives in a current approved retention and disposal authority. The conditions have to be in reasonable physical condition. And as I said, we do have a fact sheet that goes into a bit more detail about what reasonable condition looks like. And they have to be no longer um, still in use. So um, once they're transferred to us, you can't add to or amend them. So um, really they should no longer be in active use. 
you can retrieve them if you need to um, consult them for access reasons to, um, to refer to them. Um, but ideally, um, retrieval should be minimal. So once you've identified that you do have records to transfer, we ask now that you do what we're calling a transfer proposal. So this is the first of our two forms. And in that transfer proposal, um, we ask you to describe at a high level um, the types of records that you're proposing to transfer. So if they're part of an existing series, to note what that series is. If you need a new series registered, to give us a little bit of information about the series. Um, in that transfer proposal form, there's also fields where you can record the quantity of the records and the formats that they're in. Um, so we've, we're sort of trying to formalise this step um, as sort of the first way that agencies will get in contact with us when they want to do a transfer. So we'll be able to review a transfer proposal form and um, identify any work that we may require at our end. So for example, registering new series, um, we'll also be able to identify that um, if the records are in particular formats where we might um, want to provide additional advice. If the records are, for example, in digital form, um, there's fields that allow you to record um, the formats that they're in and then we can um, get in contact to discuss any specific requirements that might be relevant um, depending on their format. Um, we, if this step we also see as the opportunity for us to better schedule um, transfers to us. Um, so if we know that um, a transfer is going to take a lot of work, then we will be able to give you an estimate of the time frame in which you um, will be able to transfer the record. So we see this as providing a bit better customer service in that we will um, be able to let you know, okay, for this, these records, you can expect to be able to transfer them to us at this point in time. Um, the third step is about confirming that access directions are in place. So um, you cannot transfer records to us unless they have an access direction. Um, and there's advice on our website that um, goes into detail about how to make access directions for your records. And certainly um, you can get in touch with the agency services team and we can um, give you assistance in this. And then the fourth step is um, once we've reviewed your transfer proposal and got back to you and um, worked out any issues um, and then given you the go-ahead to proceed, is to actually get the records ready for transfer. So in the case of physical records, that means um, boxing them and listing them as per um, our fact sheet. Um, we now send out barcodes, which we ask you to affix to the boxes before you send them to us. So um, that's done at this stage. Um, and then you will send through the second of the two forms, which is a consignment list. So that's the listing of all the items that are going to be transferred. So when we receive that, we can review it, um, make sure it matches up against what you originally proposed you were going to send to us and identify any issues that we can work through. Assuming that's all good, which mostly it is, um, we will then authorise the transfer and then make arrangements for the records to come into our, our physical custody. At the moment, if you're in the Sydney metropolitan area, we will collect the records um, free of charge. If you're outside the Sydney metro area, then you need to organise your own delivery of the records to us. And then once the records come to us, we do an initial check, um, like a sort of a physical scan, if you like, just to make sure that the number of boxes that we receive matches the number of boxes that you said you were going to send us. We do an initial check of the condition of the records just to make sure that there aren't any issues like mould or um, the records aren't severely damaged or anything like that. And then we will do a more detailed checking in process where we will um, sample the records just to get a sense that yes, the records in the boxes match the records on the list um, and if there's any errors then we'll send through updated lists. Um, and once those checking in um, processes are done, we will then send you a receipt um, that acknowledges that those records are now in our custody and we'll give you the details so that if you need to retrieve them, you've got the um, relevant item numbers and you'll be able to put through a, a request to retrieve the records. Um, if we do identify significant issues, so as part of that transfer proposal step, um, there's a certification section on the form which asks the agency to certify that 
the records are no longer in use and that they're in reasonable physical condition. Um, if we identify significant issues when they come into our custody, then we will contact you to discuss options about remediation. And generally the two options are you can either, we can um, refuse the transfer, you can take it back, fix it up and then send it back to us, or we can do that work for you on your behalf. But if there are significant um significant issues with the records, then we will be looking to charge for the, that service. So the key differences really in the old process and the new um, is the transfer proposal form. So as I said, we really now would ask agencies to submit one of these um, as the first step, just so that before you go too far down the path of preparing the records, we can give you any relevant advice and just make sure that um, it all looks okay. And as I said, the barcode. So that's a new thing that we're doing now. So um, you'll be asked and expected to put barcodes on the boxes before sending them to us. And in terms of what's next for us, so um, we, we're hoping to develop some more fact sheets. So at the moment, we have a fact sheet on um, preparing and listing certain types of physical format records, so paper files, volumes and maps and plans. We're hoping to release more fact sheets about other types of physical format records like photographs. We're also um, developing some checklists and other advice to support digital transfers, so going into a bit more detail about the extra types of um, information, the metadata that we'd expect for digital transfers and any extra steps that need to be followed in those cases. Um, videos, so as I said, um, quite a bit of feedback in the survey last year um, commented how helpful it is to get that one-on-one um, -on -one, hands-on advice about how do you pack a box, um, you know, how do I do um, some basic conservation repairs if the, if the records require it. So that is something that we are um, considering um, exploring uh, next year. And then um, in the first quarter of next year, we're planning to do another satisfaction survey. So um, we see the advice as something that can be improved on um, over time. And so I'd really encourage you if you are transferring to us or if you do have a look at the advice and you have any suggestions about how it could be made more helpful or, or anything like that, that you get in touch with us. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them or otherwise um, get in contact with us. Our email address is transfer at records.nsw.gov.au and that's um, just the inbox for our team and then um, someone will be able to get back to you. Um, so the question was about if you have records in our existing facilities. Um, so um, I think there might have been a presentation at the last one about our new um, collection search um, system that's on our website. So you can do searches for series um, that we may already hold, and that is referenced in our advice. You can also contact us to ask, like for example, um, to find out what consignment you might be up to in a particular series or something like that. So we can also assist you with um, both identifying the relevant series and um, what consignment you're up to. Uh, some months ago, probably in years, uh, there was an update on the new systems that you have for the digital archive. I think there was, then, or maybe outside of that, that forum, there was talk on or a reference to self service for digital uh, records. So you're mentioning but I know a lot of this stuff is focused on physical, but you mentioned digital and, uh, and additional information on checklists. Is that still something that might be in the pipeline, a simple digital upload? Yeah. So the question is about self service potential upload of digital um, records for transfer to us. Um, the answer is, it is yes um, on, in the future, but um, in the immediate future. So um, as part of the new um, collection search, we moved to a asset management system and um, certainly that's something we'd like to explore its capacities, particularly for um, I guess sort of standard and easy um, types of records like PDFs and things like that. Um, but it's not not here yet. So it's still on the it's still on the wish list. So okay. I'm working for South Wales Health Ecology, part of our agency is uh, 
Friends Academy design service that was in which is the Cairo School, etc. that we're watching for that I've taken for so far. Um, but all those records are state archives, so we transfer them to you each year. So you've got from the 1960s onwards, a huge um, number of records. The problem for us is, though, that um, cold cases come up. You know, from the you know, 1970s and 80s, we're requested to go to court, so we have to go and call back those files. And then what happens is the New South Wales Police, they often drop off new records in relation that they have in relation to those cases. So those actually need to be added to the file that's already been sent to your facility, it's in your custody. I'm talking to Kate Musgrave at the moment, she's offering to provide us a one-off service, but you know, is there something that can be looked at as a service that you do provide a, a, an ability to add to those files that have already been sent? So, um, as the question's about adding to files that are already in our custody as state archives, so not um, records that are in the GRR, but records that are in um, state archives collection. I guess the answer is, in most cases, no, because the idea is, is that once they're transferred to us, um, they're not going to be added to, they're not going to be changed in any way. I do understand that that's a bit of a different um, scenario. So, it's not about making you don't know, yeah. um, yeah. go, okay, well, that file needs to be added to. Yeah. Um, it's something out of our jurisdiction. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I guess that's why one of, I mean, and it's difficult because it might not have been still in use, and then, you know, a certain number of decades down the track, essentially, it becomes relevant again. Um, so yeah, that is one of the reasons why we ask for transfer only once it's no longer still in use. But I understand, what you yeah, it's just I understand that Kate is talking to you about um, she, she workarounds is. in this particular case. So yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thanks, Emma.